Hallelujah. Can we stand our feet and uh, we are going to pray for the word. Amen. This is uh, one of the most important parts of the service. Amen. The Bible says you must know the truth and that truth shall set you free. Amen. So pray for yourself. Pray for God to open your understanding, open your heart, open your mind, and open your soul. So that the seed that uh, this morning will go deep and bear fruit for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Lord, I thank you for your children. I thank you for myself. We pray and we ask you, Jesus, uh, to, Father God, open doors for every one of us. This morning, as uh, we are all gathering together at your feet to be able to receive from you, I pray, Father God, for you to be able, Father God, to, to renew, Father God, Lord, our mind and to help us so that, Lord, we can be where you want us to be. Have your way, Lord, and let your will, my Lord, be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's take our Bible. Uh, Pastor Eric will read it for us uh, this morning. Amen. Good to see everybody. God bless you. Uh, welcome in God's house. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, uh, we are going to cover a topic that we believe is a very, very, very crucial and very important. Hallelujah. You can get uh, the yellow one, Pastor Eric. <laughs> so, uh, we are going to talk um, uh, to, about a topic that is very, very important uh, this morning. And uh, we want to make sure that we understand because, uh, you know, um, in uh, the people who are following Jesus, you have uh, the people who have no idea. And then you have the people who are close to Jesus. And even among the 12 that was with Jesus, there were another subgroup among the 12 made of three people. And those three were the ones that can have the key information. And so you want to make sure that uh, you are not coming to church because it's Sunday. You want to understand that you are among the three people. You want to, uh, to, to make sure that you know why you are here. And then you take the word and then you sow that word in your soul. And then you enable that word to bear fruit. What Jesus is looking for is the fruit coming, coming out of a seed. Amen? Amen? It is important. So please open up your mind and your understanding. And understand the word. And memorize the word and let the word bear fruit. In Jesus' name. How to know God's will. How to know God's will. This is a big question. We all know that God's will is what we need. Everybody will tell you that. When we pray, we always say, let, Lord, let your will be done. The next thing is uh, how do we know? Which will is God's will? And which one is our own will? And which one is the demonic will? And which one is uh, the people around will? Because again, there's uh, four different wills. Let me repeat that. There is uh, four different wills. You have your own will. There is also the devil will for you. There is also the people, the crowd, the will for you. And there is God will for you. How do you know which one is God will? Because none of the three order, yourself, the devil, or the crowd will, is, will really help you. Amen? Hallelujah. How do we know? God's will. Hallelujah. We need God's will in so many, actually in everything. Let me put it this way. In marriage, or to be engaged with somebody, to work with someone, you need to know God's will. To make a decision about what kind of job you should apply for, you need God's will. To, to decide what city or what uh, area, what state, what you should do next, you need God's will. And sometimes our own will is speaking so loud 
that we don't have time to listen and to hear God's will. Most of the time, we have our own will. And we are spending time to convince God to go according to our will. All we need is God's blessing to follow our own will. Most of the time, that's what we do. Everybody in every decision, trust me, there's no way you can have a decision that you have to make without having an, an idea. It's impossible. You will always have an idea. Now, you may not trust that idea, but you have one. You can't say you have no idea. You have one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so, how do we know God's will for our life? That's the question. Let's go in Luke. We are going, I'm sorry, Matthew first. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, verse 4 and 5. Matthew chapter 17, verse 4 and 5 will be our first read. Matthew 17, 4 and 5. If you are there, you can read, Pastor. Then Peter answered, then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Hear him, or listen him. So, uh, we, we're going to give you three examples at the three separate occasions where Peter, who was one of the closest to Jesus, was dead wrong. Amen? Amen. Three occasions, this man have a wrong decision. This one that we just read was uh, during the transfiguration. He asked Jesus, let's stay on the mountain. He forgot that there were 12. That only three were in the mountain, mountain, and there were nine other who were waiting at the at the feet of the mountain down there. And he that decision, that idea that he has about Lord, we are even going to make three. We make one for you, one for yeah. Elisha, one yeah. for Moses, right? right? The whole the idea that he has was a good idea, humanly speaking, but that was not God's will. Amen. So therefore, as soon as he said that. It's not even Jesus who respond. God himself responds. Yes, he did. And say, no, we sh you should listen to him. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And sure enough, that uh, uh, shelter, whatever he, will, he was planning to propose to make, they did not do that. Amen. They went back. So a way may appear good for a person, but his ending is death. Yes. Hallelujah. You may Amen. think that this is the way to go. But that way can hurt you, can harm you. Oh, yeah. Not everything that shines is gold. Yeah. Hallelujah. Wow. Another occasion, Matthew chapter 16, verse 22 and 23. This time, Jesus announced his death. He told the disciple that I must go and die. On that matter, again, the same Peter is going to propose something else. Thinking that his idea was a good one. And surprisingly, Jesus will rebuke him. A way may appear good for a person, but his ending can be wrong. Okay, let's go and read, Pastor Eric. So, Matthew chapter 16, verse 22 and 23. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying... Far be it from you, Lord, that this should happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are, you are an offense to me. You are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus' will in that particular occasion was the opposite of Peter's will. 
never go by your own decision. Never, never, never decide for yourself. Amen. Always ask God to make a decision. Indeed, when you accept Jesus Christ, what you do is you give your life to God. Amen. Paul said, if I live, it's no longer me who live. It's Christ who live in me. Before you make the next step, make sure that God agrees with that. How to know God's will. This morning, let the Lord speak to you because some of you in this place here are about to make a major decision. You know that there's a decision that you have to make. But make sure that whatever decision you are about to make, that God really said that that's the way you should go. Amen. Amen. Because you don't want to cry later. A decision that is not a good decision will always make you make a U-turn. But guess what? When you turn around, you may waste time. You may come back to where you were before, but guess what? The gate is already closed. So make sure before you go, wait until God clarify the whole situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Another example of a third one is in Luke chapter 22, verse 49 to 51. Luke chapter 49, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 22, verse 20, I'm sorry, sorry about that. Luke 22, verse 49 to 51. Again, one more time. Luke chapter 22, verse 49 to 51. Amen. If we are there, you can go ahead, Pastor, and read. When those around him saw what, he, what was going to happen, mm -hmm. they said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? So what happened is uh, we are now dealing with Jesus uh, being arrested. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So during the transfiguration, Peter is going to make a wrong decision. Amen. When Jesus announced that he's going to die, Peter is going to make another wrong decision. Amen. Now, when Jesus was about to be arrested in the process there, again, Peter is going to make another wrong decision. Read, Pastor. When those around him saw what was going to happen, mm -hmm. they said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so that's the question. Lord, shall we strike with what? The sword. Okay. Now, you're asking the question, right? So, next one, and we all do that. We'll ask Jesus, Lord, what is your will? But before Jesus answer, we're going to proceed. So, here, they have a great question. They're asking Jesus, what should we do? Right? Okay, now follow. And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right so that's, ear. That's Peter right there. The question has been asked. Technically, they should wait until Jesus tell them what to do. But one of them already jumped in, thinking that what he is going to do is the right thing to do. He's going by his own will as opposed to go by God's will. Now, humanly speaking, if somebody come and arrest your master, what do you do? You respond. But see, the human respond is, doesn't mean it's God's response. That's it. Amen. We don't go by our own wisdom. Or we don't go by the Amen. world standard. We go by what God said we should do. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, keep going, Pastor Eric. But Jesus answered and said, permit even this. Do you see that? Permit even this. Okay, keep going. You know, it, this day, it's not talking about cutting the ears. It's talking about him being arrested. Mm -hmm. okay, keep, keep and going. he touched his ear and healed him. Amen. He touched the ears of whom? The guy who got his ears cut. And what Jesus did? He put it back. He put it back. Let me see that. Hallelujah. He put it back. Amen. So Peter wishes it's time for nothing. Hallelujah. Your way is not God's way always. Oh, amen. There is a situation where your way can be God's way. But not always your way is God's way. Amen. It's good to take advice from people. But make sure that who, whoever is advising you is under the inspiration of God. Amen. 
Because the devil can use people around you to advise you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me repeat that. The devil can use people around you to give you an advice. And sometimes, the people who are giving you Sometimes they don't even want to give you time to think about the advice. You got to say yes, that's all. If by mistake you say no, oh my God, I will be against that. Because you're contradicting them. Yes, amen. But the Bible says fear not those who can uh, uh, kill your body but not your soul. Oh, Curse be the man who put his trust in a man. Amen. Please make sure that whatever decision you're about to make, God said you should do so. Amen. Amen. We don't go according to what somebody has been through before. Amen. Let amen, me repeat amen. that. Because most of the yes. time what we do is uh, people Google stuff. So in this scenario, what happened? What, what is the historical kind of thing? And then Google say, yeah, there's this. There's a 50% of the people did this. And then 30% did that. And then you look at the whole thing and, okay, because 50% say we should go left, let me go left. No. The crowd most of the time is wrong oh, when it comes to God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Google is not God's will. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. No, you guys understand seriously yes, what I'm talking yeah. about. Don't go by what happened before. Because you are unique. Your story is a unique story. Hey, there it is. Amen. Amen. Your yes. story is your unique. Story. Amen. Is unique. Don't take somebody else's experience and plug it in your life. Amen. Because what Google is telling you is the good part. They don't tell you about the bad side. Amen. Don't let your doctor be God Amen. and decide for you what it, when it comes to your health. That's right. Ask God really what Earth. he think. I Amen. always say that to people. And it works very well. Please, understand this. Who created us? God. God did it. Who put you on earth? God. God did that. So now, explain to me why God has to go to a doctor to tell you that your body is sick. Tell me that. You pray every day. Why God has to take a long turn to go and having you get doctor appointment, all these things for them now to tell you what God can tell you directly. Amen. Amen. Most of the time, people are sick because they buy what the doctors are selling. If you buy sickness, it's going to be with you. Amen. Let it be according to your faith. As soon as you add your faith to what you are hearing, it becomes real. No one is sick until they accept that they are sick. That's the way it works. The invisible becomes visible as soon as you believe. So doctor cannot be God will. Please understand that. Most of the time we design the whole prayer according to what somebody said. Why not cancel what he said as opposed to now pray according to the healing. The whole healing that you are looking for, actually you are not even sick. Amen, amen. I say you are not even sick. You praying because somebody said that. Who said that? He's saying that. He himself cannot solve his own problem. Doctor gets sick as well. I, I, I was talking to somebody recently, and uh, that person has a, a family member who is a doctor. The doctor needs to have a back surgery because the doctor has a back problem. Doctor gets sick. They also die. They get in coma as well. They are human beings. Don't let any human being decide for you. Hospital, medi the medical field, it's a religion. Let me say that. Hospital, it's, a, it's like a religion. Some people believe strongly in the medical field. They believe that. Oh, my God. They will believe it. Their doctor more than their pastor. Here on earth, some people are like that. The pastor will say you are healed. The doctor say no, I do the exam, you are not you are not healed. The, guess what? They will go by what the doctor say. They will pray until the result coming from the medical field say that uh, it's negative. As long as this thing is positive on the paper, don't come and tell them that they are they are healed. 
But the Bible says, whatever you pray for, you must believe that you have received it before you can see it. But you, you are busy trying to see that before you believe. Then there's a problem. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So one more time here, we can see that Peter is again wrong. Hallelujah. And in these three occasions, humanly speaking, it was not wrong. I mean, in the sense that the, the trans transfiguration, it felt good. They sing Moses and Elisha with, with, uh, and then Jesus. The whole area is filled with glory. Who wants to, want to leave that? Nobody wants to leave that place. Hallelujah. Humanly speaking, it makes sense. But spiritually speaking, it does not make sense. When, when they came and uh, Jesus said he's going to die, obviously, why? Oh, my God, there's a million of people here who need your ministry. Why are you going to go? Right? So he said, no, Lord, stay. In other words, he's showing his love, humanly speaking. But again, that is, was not God's will. Same thing when they come and arrest Jesus. He's responding. It's called self-defense. But that self-defense here is very wrong. Jesus put the ear back. How to know God's will for your life. I'm going to give you six different keys. Because if we emphasize on the problem without proposing a solution, it doesn't help. A lot of ministers, we have point fingers on the problem. But they will never tell you how to come out of it. The solution matters more than the problem. Six different keys that we, go, we need to explain. Number one, very important. It is important to surrender yourself. To surrender your personal desire. Let me put it this way. In other words, if you are in the if, when you are seeking God's will, you have to set your own opinion, your own will aside. Everybody understand that? You have to empty your mind. You have to assume that you are no longer in yourself, that somebody is, you are somebody is. You are thinking outside of the box, as we, uh, we know um, that expression. Because the whole point is this. As you say God will, it is important to be sure that you are not uh, 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 trying to, to tell God that here is my opinion and trying to have God approval for what you already decide. That's most of the time what people do. do. When you go to prayer, to pray for something, don't go and say, Lord, I want to go left. Please, make it happen according to my decision of going left. No. Lord, I decided to do this. Please, show me that that is a confirmation. No, it doesn't work that way. Don't decide. Lord, what is your desire or your will for me? What should I do? But you don't already make a decision. And then you want God to follow you, to back you up in that decision. Don't try to marry somebody based upon their physical appearance or whatever situation. And then ask God to approve that and make the marriage be a successful marriage. No. Everybody understand what I'm saying? They'll close their eyes blindly, jump into it, and then God will come and solve the problem. Make it nicer. Why not... Why not just wait and ask God and make sure that God is advising you what to do? Because if you go by yourself, you're going to spend all your time fixing problems. There is a reason why buying a brand new car is better than buying a used car. If you buy a very old used car, you got to set some money aside to pay the mechanic. Because that used old car somehow is not going to last long. You have to change piece, uh, parts. And that's what people do. They will go with their own decision, with all the risk, hoping that as they move forward, God is going to solve the problem one by one. Why not wait until you get to, because look, some problem can kill people. Some problem can swallow people. 
or can change your whole life. I've seen people being married to the wrong person and destroy their life completely. I've seen that multiple times. There were a lady who one day back 12, 14 years ago, she wanted to marry somebody. The guy was alcoholic. The lady came to church. The guy was alcoholic. She came and asked, told me about that. I said, don't marry that person. I don't believe that God wants you to marry an alcoholic. What she did is uh, she left the church. And then she, get, she went and get married with the man. Amen. I did not go to the marriage because I did not believe that God wants me to go to that marriage. Because going there would me, mean supporting what uh, she's doing. And I don't want to do the opposite of what God said. I did not go to the marriage, to the wedding. I'm not finished with the story. After they get married, the ring was around the finger. Seven days later. I'm not even talking about seven months. Seven days later. They were living in an apartment complex. The lady's luggage was right on the hallway. He doesn't want her anymore. Seven days. He put her stuff out. He put it out because the guy would go and drink and come 5 a.m. in the morning. Every night he's out. Even freshly being married, he's still drinking. Coming home in the morning, the lady complained about it. Guess what? Take your stuff out. And it costs money to divorce. And sure enough, years after, she came back. But uh, there were, I mean, anyway, story short. Please, my brother, my sister, make sure that God is deciding for you. Amen. You are not the shepherd. You are the sheep. Amen. And so you must follow God. Don't try to make it so that God is following you. No, you are not leading God. God is leading you. It is okay to delay your decision. And it's it actually better to delay your decision and make a right decision than to rush and make a wrong decision. Hallelujah. So make sure that you are not trying to convince God to approve your way. Come with a completely empty mind. Lord, whatever you decide, I will do. I want to go by your way. I don't want to go by my own way. And even if it, it may not make sense, humanly speaking, because you said I should do it, I will do it. Peter, in the Bible, the Bible says that they toiled the whole night. They did not catch anything. Jesus told, told them, go in deep water and throw that net. He said, we did that the whole entire night. We did not catch anything. But upon your word, we are going to do that. Hallelujah. And so this thing impacts every one of us. It's impact every one of us. Amen? So number one, surrender your personal desire and let God take care. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's like uh, in a car. You know? Uh, so most of the time in every house, most of the time, you always have, even though people don't say that, husband, wife, and children, most of the times, there is a one of them who is kind of the main driver. Right? They may not op officially say it, but one of them will drive mostly the older people. And when that person is around, guess what? Whoever was on the driver's seat will leave the place to whoever is, has this habit of driving the family. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so it's uh, important to know that as you're seeking God's will, you need to leave of the driver's seat and have God sitting there so that he can drive. Don't try to make God a co-pilot. God has to be the pilot. 
Amen. I'm insisting because it's important. Human beings, sometimes we think that we are more smarter than God. God, I want you to decide, but we put, we put uh, borders. You already make it so strict that in that wheel that you're looking for, God, it's a very narrow wheel. God, don't go outside of this limit here. I want you to decide, but here is the, the box. God, stay right here. You made your mind to leave Minnesota, for example, to relocate in a different state. And now you're asking God in that different state where you're going to decide what city you should live in. That's the box that I'm talking about. You understand that? Your mind has been already made to leave Minnesota. You did not ask God if he wanted to stay here or to leave. You already made your mind to leave. Now, what you're asking God, Lord, as I'm leaving, tell me what city I should go in. That's the way we behave. That's how human mind works. And so, therefore, you don't even give it time to God to, to be the to start this process and finish it. You want him to finish it, but you want to start. Or you want God to start and then you finish it. It doesn't work that way. If you want God to get involved, understand that he wants to take care of the business from the beginning all the way to the end. Hallelujah. That's the first point. You have to come up with that des desire to let God drive. And as God is driving, please do not be a backstick driver. No, because there's a lot of situations like this. Don't be the, drive, the, the, the backseat driver. Backseat driver, everybody understand what I mean, right? Hallelujah. Don't do this. Hey, break a little bit. No, hey, hey there's a car coming here. It's too, too fast. Don't slow down. So you're pressuring the driver. And don't do that. Let God take care of business. Number two, you have to meditate and stay in the word of God. As you are seeking God's will, you have to dwell in the word of God. Amen. For the time's sake, we won't be able to read it, but Joshua is telling us about it. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 is very clear. Meditate on the word of God day and night so that you can have a success. The word of God is what is going to help you stay focused on the Lord. And God sometimes, not always, sometimes speaks through the word. He can t t speak to you directly, tell you the will directly. He can use the people around, but he can also use the scripture and answer right there where you should do. So the word of God is a key. You have to stay in the word until the decision is made. Every day and every night you have to meditate on the word. Stay inside. Don't depart from it. From it. Amen? The word of God. The Bible will light uh, the way as you choose your next step. God is going to help you by giving you revelation. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three, you have to spend time in prayer. Behind a major decision that you have to make, you have to have a spiritual retreat. Please, integrate spiritual retreat in your life. Let me explain that. <clears throat> there is a, a daily prayer that we made. Right? Every day. The prayer that we make every day. But you also have to have spiritual retreat. Spiritual retreat means what? It means time where you disconnect with your people. With the surrounding area. There is nothing wrong to stay in your bedroom the whole entire day. For example, most of us work Monday to Friday. Right? I know some people work weekend. But even whoever work weekend have one day off during the day. Unless you want to work seven days. But there is at least one day among the seven that is for you. You don't always have to come out of your bedroom. Nobody said that. You can make a decision, say, Lord, this day I'm going to give it to you. You let your family people know, everybody. Tomorrow I will stay in my bedroom. There's a food in the fridge. 
manage to do whatever, but I'm going to turn my phone off. I'm going to spend time at Jesus' feet. When was the last time you did that? When was the last time you did that? You have to make that major decision. And you are still among the people. Disconnect yourself. Moses did it. There were the ten commandments that was about to happen. This man decided to disconnect himself. He was the leader of Israel. Humanly speaking, how can a leader stay away 40 days from the people you are leading? But look, Moses has to do that. So if Moses did it, you have to do that. We don't have to talk every day with human beings. Amen? Those are important decisions, my brother, my sister. Most of the time we pray, but our prayer is not enough. You warm up this thing. Look, iron, uh, everybody know here? Iron, to bend iron, you have to heat that until it gets what? Red. But as you're doing that, if you stop before it gets red, forget about bending the iron. It won't, it won't bend. Most of the time, we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray, and at the time where it's going to hook in, we stop. And we go and do something else. Prayer is like fire. You got to do it, do it until it gets to the point where boom, the answer is given. But if you stop in the, I mean, we have, there's, we, the Bible says Elisha asked the king to take a bow and arrow. Second King chapter 13. And he took a bow and arrow. The, this guy was supposed to strike five or six times. He did three and he stopped. Most of the time we walk under the expectation. You expect a great result. But your input is not enough to support that decision that you are looking for. So please, my brother, my sister, make it time. Once a month, you can do that. Once a month. You can decide to stay in your room. For the full day or half a day. Whatever. But you can make that decision. I'm staying in the basement. I will be there. If something happened here, here, here is it. You give a, you talk to your people, they all you know. You may have children, whatever. Whoever is uh, the father of a mother or whatever, brother and sister, they can take of that baby. But today, this is my time with God. It's my quality time with God. That decision will come back. That will that you're looking for will come back if you stay at Jesus' feet. Because human beings will confuse you. The more you talk to them, the more they will confuse you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, spend time in prayer. And you have to be open to God's guidance as you are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, how many number do you have so far? Three. Amen. Now, number four. God can use situation around to speak to you. God can talk to you directly. He can talk to you through the word of God. He can talk to you in your prayer, but he can also use people around you to speak to you. So you have to be somebody who is flexible to listen. Amen? Sometimes people will take advice from people outside of the family except their family members. As, as if the wife make by mistake say something, the husband get upset. Or the, the, the husband say something, well, the wife get upset. They don't want the, the, you to advise them. But the same advice, somebody is outside of the family will say the same thing, they will welcome it. Amen? Everybody knows the story about Balaam and Balak. If God can use a donkey to speak, he can use people around you sometimes to guide you, to give you advice. But if you are going with a mindset that I'm not going to listen to that person, then you are restricting God. Because he or she can be used by God to speak to you. Hallelujah. Amen. So you got to be open to God's uh, guidance through other people. 
Amen? Through older people. And sometimes it may be a situation that's not even related to the will that you're looking for. But somebody in the middle of something have a piece of information that when you take it and you plug it in your situation, you get the answer. It is like a key. But you have to be open and flexible. Don't always looking for advice that please you. Because some people are like that. If it doesn't go their way, they get upset about it. But if you already made your mind, why then do you ask God to help you? If your mind is already made. Hallelujah. Most of the time is this. When, uh, when, uh, as long as you want to do it, God will always let you do it. If you want to do it, go ahead. But you're going to come back. It's like I think about something that's a dead hand. Somebody's been sitting, you know it for sure. They're going to come back from the same road, but there's only one road. And over there, it's a good sack. And that's what happened. If you want to do it, go ahead. But you're going to turn around. Because God is the only one who can read the future. So we must welcome people who also live with us. Listen your wife. Listen your husband. Listen your children. No way it says that parents are always right. Look, parents can be wrong. Children can be right. It doesn't go by age. No. There is a reason why they live with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Another example, since we're talking about that. Everybody knows Moses. Who was behind the success of Moses' ministry, if I can call it this way? Who was behind? Who, who, who? Who is, okay, God is God. Let's set God aside for a moment, okay? What is, who is the human being that make a shift in Moses' so calling? Jethro, his father-in-law. What he says to Moses? Okay, Moses, people were, thank you, Pastor Rick. There were line. People were coming. Moses was the only one, the man in town, taking care of so many different things. Jethro came and said, look at the whole thing. He said, hey, no, you're going to burn out yourself. What you need to do is appoint somebody to help you doing that. And indeed, Moses did it by appointing Joshua. And that helped him deal with the spiritual aspect, connecting with God, and then having helpers. But Moses can, could have said to Jethro, hey, who are you? When God appeared to me, you were not there. But, but he didn't he welcomed that idea. But who was Jethro for Moses? His father-in-law, family member. So don't be always in a defensive mode. Hallelujah. Because if you do that, guess what? They get scared to say anything. Next time, they will be quiet. They see you going the wrong direction. They can't even say anything. Because last time they, they talk about it, you were very upset about it. But you can't always be right. Nobody can always be right. Hallelujah. Those are key advice, my brother, my sister. Please listen to your people. There is a reason why they are your people. My wife will look at me in my eyes and will tell me right away if I'm wrong, she will tell me. There's a lot of things we do here, but I have an advisor. I will go to her. I will go to other pastor. I will go to people. I don't rely on myself. I rely on God. But also I know that God appointed people to give us advice and guidance. Hallelujah. If you are not sure, check with people. But also, as you are doing that, make sure that you're not going to ask somebody who's a witch to decide for you. Trust whoever is advising spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But I also want to let you know that God can even use unbelievers to advise you. Amen? Let me repeat that. God can use your manager to advise you. He may not be uh, the same, go to the same church like you. He may not even sometimes believe in God. But he can give you good advice. Amen? Be open. Hallelujah. Number five, important. Do not consider the circumstances around you. Amen. Right? Because the circumstances mean in this scenario, this is where we should do. 
If you do that, then don't see God real because God doesn't go by the circumstance around. No. Amen? Don't look at the whole context around and then make a decision based upon the context. No. God doesn't go by the context. For Peter to walk on the water can be the context. Because human speaking, there's something called gravity. You can't walk on water. Period. But Jesus Christ made him walk on water. The situation, the context said that Lazarus is dead. There's a four days. He's already smelling. That's the, the, the situation. Humanly speaking, there's no way somebody who is dead four days can come back to life. But Jesus said, roll this, this stone. Praise the Lord. If you come with your rational mindset, then go by it. But if you want to follow God, understand that uh, God may ask you to go in a situation that may not make sense. Humanly speaking. But there's a reason why. Amen? So God and not the, not the circumstances should guide your decision making. Amen? Hallelujah. Don't listen to the situation. Listen God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, this is good. It's a good message. Uh, look, when somebody is not feeling well, say somebody has a pain. It can be back pain and headache. It can be whatever area you have. somebody is feeling the pain. You can listen to the pain and feel that you are sick. Or you, can, you cannot listen to the pain and believe that you are healed. Healing doesn't happen at the moment where the pain stops. Healing happened before the pain stops. You understand that? Healing happened before that. Amen? You have to believe that you are healed and then that believing is God is going to kill the pain. The pain will go because you believe. Then the pain gets afraid and go because you believe. It's that belief that is going to replace the pain. But don't wait until you don't feel the pain anymore before you believe. That's the other way around. So we don't go by what you feel. We don't go by what you see. We don't go by what we understand. That's why the Bible says, do not rely on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3. Don't rely on your own understanding. No matter how you understand the situation, it's not real. How can you understand the situation? You can't even understand that. No matter how smart you are, you will never be able to understand what's, what is happening in your life. No. Just believe. Jesus said that. To Jairus. He said, he said, don't be afraid. Only believe. 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 Why? Because the crowd was trying to intimidate him. They said, no, don't bother Jesus anymore. But your daughter is already dead. Leave him alone. Jesus turned to him and said, don't be afraid. Only believe. Hallelujah. The last one is to let the Holy Spirit influence your emotion and your mind. Most of the time, there's always a battle that is going on in our mind. This battle is between our own opinion and God's opinion. We're trying to influence our mind. Let me repeat that again. We are, because decisions are made away in your mind before it reached your heart. And so you have to let the Holy Spirit control your mind. You have to let the Holy Spirit dominate your mind. You have to let God will be able to influence your emotion and your mind. Not people. Amen. So, six keys, let me repeat that. The title of the message is How to Know God's Will. Number one, you have to surrender your personal desire. Set it aside. Set yourself aside. You do not exist anymore. You are not speaking to yourself anymore. You let God decide. Empty your mind. Number one. Number two, 
you stay in the word. You keep reading the word. You are right there in reading, looking for ways the word can speak to you. That's the thing. Number two. Number three, your knees are down. Spending time in prayer. Creating a spiritual retreat. Minimizing the interaction with people. Maximizing the interaction with God. For the Shunammite woman said, I dwell among my own people. People cannot solve a people problem. Human being cannot solve human being problem. They can advise you. They can patch it. But they don't have the long-term solution of the problem. Hallelujah. Amen. So spend time in prayer, number three. Number four, you have to be open to other people's advice. Hallelujah. Amen. Number five, you have to make sure that you don't look at the situation around, the circumstance around. should not be the key to make a decision. Because you don't say, I'm going to steal because anyway, I don't have money. Well, you don't have money. It doesn't mean you got to go and steal somebody's stuff. The circumstance is that your pocket is empty. But you don't use it as a reason to be able to make a decision to say, because, because of this, it makes sense to do that. No, you don't do that. Hallelujah. And uh, the last one is uh, to let the Holy Ghost influence your mind. Let God, you, you soak your mind in God. You don't go by your own will anymore. You don't go by your own desire anymore. You don't go by your own thinking anymore. Set your mind on the things that are above and not on the things that are on the earth. Your mind has to be renewed. To follow God and to know God's will, you have to let God's mind replace your mind. God has to, to replace your mind by his own mind. You're now thinking like God. Amen? Hallelujah. We are going to stand our feet and we are going to pray. How to know God's will. Everybody here needs God's will. You need God's will at your workplace. You need God's will in your finances. How to manage your finances. When you should buy it, it can be house, it can be cars, it can be something. When you should buy it, what kind of car or what kind of house or what, what is the next step? Those are things that require God's uh, opinion. Hallelujah. Who you should live with require also you to ask God. And so on. Many things in everything. God always have a will in everything in your life. Why? Because he owns you. Whatever thing you want to do, God has a decision. You have to discover that. In fact, you are not asking God to think about it. No. Let me repeat that again. God does not need time to figure out. You are not God asking God to, hey, Lord, here is the situation. What do you think? No. God, think, God thinking and his will was, it was there before you even, the idea even came in your mind. All you need to do is to discover God's will. For he said, I know the plan that I have for you. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Plan to give you hope and a future. Plan to prosper you. So we are going to ask God to reveal the plan. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 said, call me and I, I will answer and I will show you things that are hidden. So begin to pray right now for yourself. We're not going to pray loud. I don't want anybody to pray loud because this is so important. Pray inside. Like Hannah, the mother of Samuel. The Bible says she was praying from her soul. Pray right now because I know there's a key decision that you're about to make. The devil is about to propose you something that is wrong. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. Everyone take time whatever situation, position you want to take. But at this point, please talk to God. Talk to him right now. As we are doing this, before the end of this service, he will tell you what to do. He will tell you what to do. He will tell you what to do. 